You're watching Fanboy Versus with your hosts, J.D. Church, Nicole Hale, Chris Triplett, and Chris McFeely. And you are watching Fanboy Versus. I am your host, J.D., joined this week by Nicole and Chris. Yeah. That's Chris McFeely, because apparently self-fulfilling prophecies come true. <laughs> it's not my fault. We mentioned two fault. weeks ago. You cursed, you cursed, cursed triplets. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's fanboy versus the rotating cast. As uh, McFeely's a wizard. <sighs> he can apparently see into the future. I'm a witch. God. So anyway, yeah, Triplet bitched out on us like two days ago and said he wouldn't be here. So, alas, we still do not have a full crew. But hey, the show is live this week and Yay. on the video. Last few minutes. <laughs> yeah, we'll see how long that lasts. See, you know, I remember when we began this show and I was so terrible. And now it's like I'm the dependable one because I leave the show <laughs> to Brian Kilby for a week and terrible things happen. So terrible, oh. awful things. We can't speak of them. <sighs> so anyway, but don't terrible, awful things always happen when it involves Kilby? That's what um, I have heard. No, I'm well, not saying it's true. No, no, I give him, <laughs> I give him a hard time. But no, usually things are really great. He's he's had a lot of problems with his internet lately. So yeah, I know. Um, so internet connection, I guess I should say. It's not like the internet's having a problem. Um, <clears throat> so. Yeah. News, I guess, is where we'll start because there's some of that, some of that that makes me sad. So, Chris? There isn't a lot of it. It's just uh, after two weeks on the same, beating the same drum, it, Marvel's still canceling stuff. Yeah. Why? Yeah. You know, I... What have we had now? Like, last week, I've, I can't even remember what's been canceled in what order. We already knew that Victor Von Doom... And the destroyers, mm -hmm. and um, I can't even keep track of. I know this week it's been announced that Black Panther has been cancelled, that X twenty three has been cancelled, that Punisher Max is ending, Ghost Rider is ending, and uh, last one, Dick and Dark Wolverine is cancelled. Yeah, now, a lot of the a lot of these things are are getting to come come to an end. Like Punisher Max is coming to an end, and uh, Dick and seems to be coming to an end. Um, less so with the other ones, you know. And these these are all the bottom of the list titles that, that don't sell particularly highly. And um, yeah, I, it's not. Hmm, it's not like I truly have to really gripe at Marvel for canceling like their lower like a good slashing down is what Marvel's line needs. It, you know, on that level, I can't get stuck into them but there is a tremendous sense of doom whenever you get that many cancellations in yeah. the span of two weeks yeah i mean at some point you know and i'm sure that like us on this show not even a few months ago we we're saying man marvel's putting out a ton of titles and not so many blah 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 and now we're like oh my god they're canceling things so yeah yeah i mean okay there's a little bit of balance there it's just like some of the things that they are canceling that is a bit i don't know strange like you know they've canceled alpha flight they, i mean oh, that went from it, being yeah. a mini to a full to none yeah uh, i think that was jumping the gun to be honest i mean none of these actively surprise me black panther that's strike three for black panther uh yeah. it's not i'm not it's not like i'm celebrating the deaths of any of these series or anything but maybe marvel will get the picture on the black panther now um, after three tries throw them in a team the latest comic. of which involved stealing daredevil's numbers to try and make it work you know just, give just, give it up on that one you know this... and then you know on the surface you look at daredevil i mean dick and x23 and you're like, oh, well, they've canceled two low-selling Wolverine knockoffs. Oh, what a loss to society. Right. But, you know, X-23 has uh, always been popular. I've never been able to fathom why exactly, but she has always been popular. And uh, uh, I'm given to understand that since Rob Williams came on, who's the guy that's currently writing Ghost Rider, so that's two books that he's lost, since he came on to DKM, that book has really turned around. And even deeper than that, with the loss of Ghost Rider and X-23, Marvel has no solo female books left anymore. Yep. And with the loss of Day Kane, that's their only LGBT-led book gone. Yeah. 
Yeah, it, and that's, you know, it's again, because not a few months ago, we were sitting here saying, why can't DC be more like Marvel? Look at what they've done. <laughs> now they've canceled all their female lead titles and <laughs> LGB stuff. They've got a few minority titles, sure, but, you know, now it's like, well, wait a minute, DC's got... I'm trying got to think of one. Minority led for Marvel? Uh, Spider-Man Ultimate? Oh, yeah, okay. I um, was thinking... thinking fix uh, them, fix. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but they did cancel Iron Man 2.0. They've canceled... Well, uh, again, you know, Iron Man 2.0, yeah, that, as the first one out of the gate, that was, you know, that's yeah. the gate strike two for War Machine. Right. So... Mm. So do you think, like, Marvel's trying to do a whole reboot themselves like what DC do? They're just going out a different way? Well, I think it's become three months in. It's become apparent. I mean, we don't, we you know, we still don't have the full measure of the new Fifty Two, and Marvel isn't suffering for DC's success. You know, that's that's mm -hmm. the key thing. It's not suffering for it, but they have to come up with a response, and it's it's quite obvious that right now they don't have one. Mm -hmm. They can't just give us a Phoenix event next summer and say it's that. You know. They have got to do something to blow everybody out of the water. And mm, mm, cancelling a bunch of stuff, you know, trimming down the line is not a bad idea, but I think, you know, for everybody that's cried out for Marvel to try and pare down their lines, I think what they really meant was could we have maybe only two X-Men books and maybe we only need one Avengers book and things like that. Yeah. But then, you know, these are the things that actually sell. So from a purely business standpoint... I know why what's getting cancelled is getting cancelled, but I think that but that's that's just sort of putting a band aid on the current state of the books, you know. They really do need a complete D C style strip down and restart. Heroes Reborn? Uh, not not when I say restart. <laughs> <laughs> I have a I have an an, uh, an inordinate soft spot for Heroes Reborn anyway, so that won't work on me. But <laughs> uh, I reject you, sir. <laughs> But you know, um, I, mean, I, I don't. I don't literally mean restart. But you know, they uh, they need a, a consolidation. You know, canceling the low selling books, which are the ones that offer variety. To lose Victor Von Doom, Destroyers, um, DKNX twenty three, Ghost Rider. You know, things like that. It's you know, it's sad that Punisher Max is gone. But that was a book that never really had a way, found its way after Garth Ennis left it. And we already have a, a, a superior mainstream uh, Punisher title. You know, whatever. And the Max imprint has been dying on its arse for ages anyway. What, um, what they ought to do is do their whole Ultron thing that they've been building up to. And uh, I don't know what's happening to Nicole, but that's wacky. What's happening to me? I don't know. It's like all pixelated. and She's just me? delayed on my side. Yeah. It's oh, wacky well, over here. Oh, this. Anyway, uh, um, I, I, what they need to do is have they Marvel the Marvel universe is just enormous right now, and what they really need to do is have Ultron come in and kill off like seventy percent of the Marvel <laughs> universe and really parse it down. And, well, they have to come up with some kind of drastic response to regain their lost ground uh, because although things you know although as i say we don't have the full measure in the new 52 seals will slip back down yet you know mm -hmm. as the first story arcs come to an end and people make their true and final decisions about what's going on at dc you know things are going to slip back down but the pr grown simply lost by marvel and mm -hmm. uh, to follow it up immediately by going um popular but lo critically popular but low selling title x is now cancelled yeah. it's not wait you know no <clears throat> there needs I... to be a consolidation and that consolidation is not launch a third spider-man book you know no exactly and i uh, i read that from last week and i don't know if y'all reviewed that but i thought it was pointless was that Avenging Spider-Man? Yeah. I didn't. So. Yeah, I actually... I mean, I've seen it get very good reviews, but I haven't read it. For what? It had nothing in it. It it was not I'm even... Com there was nothing in it. I mean, there was nothing I felt of value in it. It didn't seem... Anyway. But, I, you know, I don't know. I have this I have this inkling that Marvel's going to do this huge Avengers push right, or, right before the Avengers movie comes out. Oh, right. Totally. No question. And but, so... Uh, I is actually really launching a new Avengers title at number one again. I I have a bet with a my response to uh, to to DC. You know, I have a bet with my shopkeep that in the month of May there will be no less than twenty titles 
that have the word Avenger attached to it. <laughs> 20? Well, that seems a bit of an exaggeration. I have to say. Are you including graphic novels in that? Um, I don't think... I don't think I'd, I'm trying to remember how I, I worded it, but I, my vision is that they are going to have a big Avengers event. They're going to have all the current Avengers books and they'll have tie-ins plus they'll have solo titles with uh, Avenger uh, colon whoever. I think you're going a little high there. I mean, you're going to have adjectiveless mighty seek, no, um, mighty is mighty the new thing. No adjectiveless secret new, Academy, Assemble is going to be that new Bagley Bendis one. So that's five. Mm-hmm. But, you know, the, the Avengers minis and things, they they run now. That's why we're getting these Avengers one-shots now. That's why Avengers solo was happening now. Mm-hmm. Because then when the trades are out, they'll be out in time for the film. There weren't really any Thor miniseries actually happening when Thor was in the cinema. There weren't any Captain America minis happening when he was in the cinema. Those came several Afterwards. months beforehand yeah. so well the, uh, like i said they bridged the two stuff. by doing fear itself between thor and yeah and but Captain that wasn't America. actually uh, like uh, that wasn't yeah but you know if you were if you were if you'd made that bet for an iron man and captain america and said that that would Mm-mm. you know put, no it wouldn't have worked either worked in it. no it wouldn't have worked either because it saying... seems like an, an, an exaggeration and i'm not, i'm just not sure if it's going to start as soon as may that's the thing you tend to lose sight of these things i mean that's that's four months away five months away mm-hmm. and um I'm going to stay strong Fear on that. itself is barely over. It's not even really over. Yet. No, you've got uh, the Fearless mm. still out. You've got a couple of other things. So, I don't know. Yeah, I just... It seems like Marvel has now put itself in a position, or at least DC has put Marvel in a position where it's sort of like, you know, the ball's in your court now. And, I mean, based on the number of the... I, I, don't, I don't know... In some ways, I don't even think this is really tied to DC. In some ways, I think this is just part of the Marvel process is having at the same time. And when we saw that they had let a lot of um, uh, editors go, now oh, they're yeah, cutting I mean, it's titles. Like it's in response to DC or anything. It's not yeah. happening because of it. But the <sighs> urgency of the situation or the drama is magnified a thousandfold by the sudden burst of success that DC is enjoying. Yeah. You know, I, and another thing that I've I've got that feeling with Avengers is Christos Gage said something about Academy, you know, coming into the next um, event or whatever. So I'm wondering if, like I said, I just I'm feeling that big Avengers push coming around May, and like I said, one shots, everything. I'm I'm counting all of that. So I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, keep that. Remember that one, listeners. So there you we'll go. See. Yeah. I've I've put it out in the ether. So <laughs> we'll see what happens. Um is there any other news? Hmm. Huh, hmm. I can't think of anything. Yeah, I don't recall. I mean, I haven't really heard anything out of DC. They seem to be No, there's no right new along. launches in the newest previews from DC, you know, so Yeah, I mean this Oh, just... uh, Batgirl's joining the Birds of Prey, I think was the height of the the news we got a is she joining or is she just going to be like no no she's joining joining she is oh. she is joining mm, interesting wow that's about it hmm um yeah no there it was just all the marvel cancellations this week dc didn't really have anything i'm really i'm really disappointed in ghost rider in particular because that title had that four was a issues. minority female led it's a minority female led it had four issues which were weighed down by the Johnny Blaze story that took up more than half of each of those issues. So the issue that came out last week was really the first issue that featured Alejandra with like on her own, like really being ghostwriter and doing her own thing. So you know, See, I, mean, I think Ghostwriter's audience is just so narrow now at this stage that nobody wants another ghostwriter. That is until Johnny or the next Danny. movie comes out. Yeah. I uh, well. It's kind of surprising they didn't even try and like, well that's the thing, you know, when Ghost the next Ghost Rider movie comes out, will we see another Ghost Rider number 1 and will it just be Johnny again, you know? Yeah, maybe that's maybe that's the movie I they're mean, going for. But... I don't I don't think that that the new Ghost Rider really had anything to really truly actually appeal to 
Ghost Rider fans, you know? It wasn't about Ghost Rider, it was about some new chick. Who was badass, though? I'm not questioning she's, the cast. I didn't read it, so locust. I can't comment. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's pretty awesome, actually. That is awesome. I can't, <laughs> I can't comment on the character. I'm just saying I don't yeah. think it actually gave anybody what they actually wanted out of a Ghost Rider comic, you know? Yeah, and I, and I guess that's the thing. It's like, for me, I mean... It's like when they turned Thunderbolts into Superhero Fight Club and completely changed the cast, you know? Yeah. It, yeah, it doesn't appeal to... I mean, and like I said, I'm a long-time Ghost Rider fan. I liked it. But I'm also, like, really flexible, and I'm willing to, you know, give characters a chance, give things a Okay, but this is, what is this? This is, like, Strike 3 for Ghost Rider again, isn't it? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's just, like... Marvel, just, like, step back. I think, you know, if there's anything that's about to be cancelled, it's got to be Moon Knight. Uh, yeah, that one's probably... It'll be, on like, way. Strike 4 for Moon Knight. Yeah. I mean, there's not I mean, much... I know there's a lot of panic around Avengers Academy, but I don't feel it though. I mean, it's no, like... I don't feel it. it. It's, I mean, it doesn't sell particularly high, and it's, but it's and steady. I'll, it is entirely down to sales that this is happening. But yeah, it is. It's rock solid in in its sales. I mean, if it if it starts losing sales, you know, then it's gonna then it's gonna feel it. But you know, X twenty three was actually selling more than it. So her cancellation does not seem to be an entirely sales-motivated one. She is joining Avengers Academy, so I guess they're hoping for some consolidation of sales there as well. And I think they're also maybe just trying to reconsider what to do with her character, you know? Yeah, I, X-23 is a, is a bit of an enigma to me. I didn't even realize she existed until a few months ago, or maybe even a month ago. So it's like... I don't, I don't, you know, I'm sure there's an audience and appeal. I just, I just wasn't even aware of it. Um, and reading her backstory seemed kind of strange, but whatever. Um, You're good to her well. So, I mean, so, uh, I don't know. That's why I hate to comment because it's like, you know, who knows? It could be good. I mean, much like, like I said, Ghost Rider is good. I mean, it's not like blow you away amazing, especially this like first issue on her own. I mean, she actually finds her, like, biological father, and um, he's, like, a human trafficker. <laughs> Ew, fun, because that's what they do down in Mexico. Yeah, so uh, she uh, she gives him the old penance stare, and, uh, yeah, burns, burns his soul out. It's awesome. But, yeah, I mean, she could spit locust. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's cool. That's just awesome in and of itself. That's pretty you know? cool. <laughs> she had nunchucks and chains and everything so anyway but she was interesting too because i mean you definitely saw that there was character moments there but that doesn't matter if it doesn't sell yeah it's the fact is you know it's like as good as it was it's, that's one of those things where nobody was actually even talking about it i know? know i know but that's the thing is i felt like it was weighted down by fear itself and there was so much negativity around fear itself especially towards the end that well, it I think off it, good. And I think it weigh I think it ended up weighing down things like Alpha Flight and Ghost Rider. And, well, to be and fair, I just things. think they kind of jumped the gun with Alpha Flight. Anyway, and I don't think Alpha Flight being upgraded. I think they just sort of jumped the gun with it anyway. Yeah, I don't know. It's just like I wish. I wish these books could get a chance outside of events like that, where they could... Yeah, like, uh, but you, you know, you say that, but being honest, they probably didn't sell any more than they would have if they were part of those events. You know, the events, you know, for all the people moaning about events, as much as bad as Spirit itself was, as bad a lot of these events are, they are the first thing people buy. But it, you know, the, it gives me an excuse. <laughs> it gives me a reason. <laughs> no, you're probably right. So... Now I've lost Nicole's video completely. I have no idea what happened to it. It will not turn on. But can you hear me? Yeah, I can yeah. hear you. Okay, you'll just have to stare at Pinkie Pie. Okay. <laughs> see if I can do... Okay. This... Nope. Okay, we'll just do this then. Yeah, I have no idea what happened. Okay. I apologize. That's cool. Anyway, <laughs> so... I guess we'll review stuff? Yeah, All we'll right. do that. Might as well, you know. So, yeah, that's what we do here. Yeah. We like to review stuff. Uh, <laughs> Nicole, then. All right. Third week in a row starting off. Ah, uh, number one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is actually Star. like. <laughs> mainly because Triplet's not here. <laughs> hey, I started off the last two. Uh, I know, and I, I started you yeah, off the week see? before just to be fun. See? So, yeah. Yeah, see? I like this. Anyways, I'm going to review <laughs> Ghostbusters. This is number three of the new series. <laughs> And can I tell you, the series is still awesome. 
Okay, so what it's about, um, you know, there's a Occupy Wall Street going on here. If you guys haven't heard about it, you haven't seen <laughs> it on the news. No. <laughs> what? Well, guess what? Occupy what, you say? <laughs> well, guess what? In this issue, Wall Street occupies itself as the uh, stock bear, you know, the big, huge bear statue that they have down there, mm-hmm. gets possessed and runs amok around the city. So, <laughs> so that's your, your weekly ghost of the week. So uh, the, the thing is, they're having to combat this because now it's more of a physical entity instead of, you know, like a plasmatic creature. So it, it actually has some physical qualities. So Egon has to figure out how to revert the proton packs to combat this physical entity. And this, so they had to reinvent new stuff. And uh, there's also a side, there's a couple side stories. There's a couple people who are trying to become Ghostbusters themselves, and they're trying to steal the proton packs. So you mm-hmm. see this little, the little, these two little guys trying to plot against them and try to take over. Uh, and then you have another side story where Ray has c- encountered a kind of a magical book. And whatever you pretty much think about or write down uh, from your dreams, and it, it happens. Well, guess what? That doesn't come out too well in the end. Because they talk about, um, he gets sent back to where they met up with Gozer. And he's being forced to think of another entity. And there's a big twist here at the end where you can see what he's thinking about that he's been drawing into the book. And, and it's pretty nasty. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah, this book um, uh, <laughs> Define nasty. Um, okay, I'll go ahead and tell you. Basically, it is oh. this demon-like creature that has impaled all four, four of the Ghostbusters. Okay, so Ooh. gross, nasty. <laughs> it's a, it's <laughs> it's not like really graphic. It's just like hand-drawn black and white ink. But you get the point. <laughs> I mean, it's still something that you know a young person c- could look at and be like, "Oh, wow, that's kind of bad." So this book is supposed to tell the future so is this going to happen or is ray going to change what goes on why he's being captured by this other creature uh, again this is also they also have the uh, it's called the paranormal uh, oversights commission where they talk about the the wall street bear uh all in depth i mean they give details this is just one of the, like little side notes they have the gallery of all the different uh sketches of the bear and then of course again they have the the fan art of young kids so they have a couple here a couple fan art of some nine-year-olds it's it's kind of like a mini trade with all the extras that they have in here there's only two advertisements that are in the very end it's very well worth the four bucks that you pay for the series is awesome and i get excited each month to see what's going to happen and if you guys were a fan of walter peck in the movies he does make his first appearance in here Ah. Awesome. Mm. <laughs> so, so he makes his appearance. Of course, him and Janine get at it, and I love it. <laughs> so, is this true? Well, they fight. <laughs> 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 so, I mean, each page is just filled with something awesome. The 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 art is great. It's fun, and of course, Peter. I laughed out loud twice with Peter. Some of the things he says, you're just like, oh my gosh. So, now who's, the, who's the creative team on this one again? Um, this one is written by Eric Burnham, uh, art by Dan Showing. I know so. this person. But it's a, I love it. It's awesome. There's a lot of great... It's a, there's the overarching story that has to do with Ray, and then you have all these little side stories going on, and it's just fun. There's something for everyone in it. Nice. Go out and... Easily a five out of five. That's how much I enjoyed it. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, uh, so I was excited to fine. review it. It's like, yay, this is fun. Awesome. Of course, the Wall Street Bear is awesome. <laughs> Should have done the bull. That would have been really cool. Uh, who knows? Maybe the bull's next. It means awesome. less and less to me. <laughs> Do what? It means less and less to me, honestly. There's a piece of news we didn't talk about. was Frank Miller ranting about um, Wall Occupy Street this Wall week. Street. Yeah, um, I, I try to ignore that because, you know, I don't know. There was a lot of people that got split on that because, 
you know, in some ways they were like, but but we but we love Frank Miller, but we want to like Occupy, and we don't know how to reconcile these things in our brain. Yeah. It's like, well, you can <laughs> you can like the artist and not like the things that they say. That's yeah. a very simple thing. To do. I mean, that's, yeah, that's, that's how I feel about Clark. Madonna. I mean, I, I, I like her music, but I don't like her. <laughs> I don't like her face. <laughs> uh, yeah, the I don't know. The Occupy thing is, is interesting. It has started to creep into comics as well. A few I, just issues. Thought was, it, I just thought this was interesting. I mean, they have fun with, with it, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that sounds like the most... Politics, it's just the bear that's taking over downtown uh, Manhattan. Yeah. That's... I don't want to go into politics either, but I just don't get. I don't know what they think they're achieving. No, it, well, yeah, that's a whole. That's a different you know. Basically, show. I mean, Frank Miller was crass and and crazy, and it's the creepy, crazy, shouty stuff he's been putting in his comics for years, and now you see it coming out of his own mouth instead of out of the mouth of one of his characters. But his basic yeah. sentiment, aside from all of the really misplaced like fury and rage and exaggeration, was. I don't know what these people think they're achieving by sitting on Wall Street with their iPhones. And I'm like, I don't basically disagree with you. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, yeah. 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 But like I said, I think we'll see, you know, again, it's not uncommon for politics and comics to cross over. Um, Remember the uh, tea, uh, tea bagging incident in um, uh, Captain America last year. Yeah, well, and um, what? Uh, well, I mean, it goes further back than that. The question, I mean, you know. So, <laughs> oh, yes. Well, I mean, Richard Nixon was the leader of an evil secret society in Captain America in the seventies. But yeah. like, you know, yeah. even <laughs> Alan Moore. I mean, talk about Watchmen. You know, <laughs> like. Yeah. So I mean, you know, but it's not uncommon. And like I said, uh, already in a few of my issues, uh, of course, nothing DC, but a couple of of Marvel things have already mentioned Occupy and stuff. So I don't know. It'll be interesting to see just, I mean, like I said, I, whether, however you feel about that, I think it's going to be interesting to see the different ways that ends up leaking into, um, comics and such. Marvel's usually, you know, like I said, I don't expect to see much out of DC for it, but, uh, in particular Marvel. They... Well, Marvel's always been a little bit more just about the, reflecting contemporary politics in the state of the world, you know, whereas DC is always much more open to a fictional president or whatever. Right. Absolutely. You know, that's just more of a Marvel sort of thing. <sighs> but then DC just doesn't seem to be doing anything with that at all at the minute. You know, we got presidents referenced in this week's Justice League, but I don't think he appears at all. No, and I, and I think that, you know, with, with DC, they're so on to this New 52, and there's a lot of different... I mean, again, Justice League is taking place five years prior to the current yeah. world, and so... Say nothing. Yeah. <laughs> so. I mean, I think once they get it all settled down, given the... Well, we said it before, it's a kind of marvel sort of approach. I could see that... It, it, just like whatever it is, like the new 52, it feels like a world where they could start doing more things like that. Yeah, absolutely. But they need to get the basics of the world really laid down before they can start bringing the real world into it, and they haven't got there yet. So. Yeah. Absolutely. But we're not talking about the real world. We're talking about comics. Yeah, the real world <laughs> sucks. Yeah, yeah the screw that. The real world sucks. We need our superheroes. <laughs> well, then, uh, I guess uh, since we mentioned Marvel, let's talk about something from Marvel. And I am going to be talking about Avengers Academy, something that is consistently good. We um, always talk about Avengers Academy. We worry that we bore you with our constant discussion of how awesome Avengers Academy is. <laughs> but I don't, because it is really good, and you should pre-order it. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. Support you this shit. You should pre-order <laughs> this. Don't just buy it off the shelf. Go tell your shop you want it every week. Anyway. Or every month, anyway. So... <laughs> I was like, it's weekly now? It wow. should be. <laughs> and um, only. I don't... Okay, so basic overview. The title of this issue is Disappointments, and man, does that ever ring true. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> so many disappointments. A lot of um, parent to, you know, a sort of like mentor to child sort of uh, things going on in this issue, and lots of sub things as well. Um you know, we talk about, we mentioned this several, maybe even last year when we were talking about 
Jonathan Hickman writing Fantastic Four when really what you're waiting for is your opportunity to write Doctor Doom. <laughs> and I think if you're like an you know, X-Men, Avengers sort of uh, fan, you're really waiting for your opportunity to write Magneto. And I don't think that's as true. Not as it. true, but it's in there. of the way Magneto flip-flops, you know. Magneto yeah. can be wherever he is. Doom, everybody waits for their chance to do it. Nobody does Doctor Doom out of the gate when they start no. on Fantastic Four. Everybody no. waits for no. their Doctor Doom that story. That savory moment. But this has been going on a while, and Magneto's here now, so... Um, yeah. So, um, you're, you're, the basic gist of the story is, again, Jocasta got uh, tore up, killed-ish in the last issue. And... I really, really like that they just don't go back to that at all with this issue. I mean, obviously mm. it's the setting for it, but they don't burden what is already a good issue with little glimpses of the evil future Academy kids and yeah. reptiles being controlled from the future and they... stuff. Just they, let that simmer at the side, discuss it, and get all this plot going on. They here. tease around it with little things that I'll mention, but, I mean, yeah, they don't really let that hang over the story. You know, Christos does a great job of that. But, um, <clears throat> so, Pym wants to find out why. He's found an odd energy signature, and he knows just who to call to get the answers that he needs, which is Cyclops and his X-Men, <laughs> because they have Magneto. Master of the Electromagnetic Spectrum. Yes. So, Magneto's called in after several altercations between... Dis disagreements between, I don't know, Quicksilver and Hawkeye and the kids and Magneto and Emma Frost and a lot of fighting. Magneto finally does what he came to do at the beginning of a whole damn thing. Um, finesse, uh, having all kinds of issues. And they finally find out that they really don't know any more than they did. In fact, <laughs> Magneto just gives them more questions than they have. I mean, the so. key thing to remember here that drives this issue is that Finesse, a long time ago in this series, probably she started doing it before you guys were even reading it, um, she asked Quicksilver to teach, she blackmailed Quicksilver into teaching her everything that Magneto had tried to teach him. Mm hmm. She wanted the best of both worlds. She didn't just want the lessons of the hero. She wanted the lessons of the villainous as well. And this is the culmination of that thread. Yeah. Where she meets Magneto for herself. And, uh, you know, sometimes you shouldn't meet your idols. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. You should hold a different perspective on life. But there's a lot of sub things that go on in this issue that I think are interesting. Um, some of the banter between the kids, I mean, in particular between um, Reptile and White Tiger. Yeah, um, angry Mexican. Yeah, between uh, Hazmat and Wizkid. <laughs> that was brilliant. And then, and then also between Hazmat and um, uh, what is, from Power Pack? Her name is Lightspeed. oh yeah, Lightspeed. I was wondering if Gage was going to hit on that at all. There were some very vague intimations towards that during the Loners miniseries that they were they were part of. Um, I talked about that before. Ricochet and and, and Dark Hawk and and uh, Phil Yurick, the current uh, Hobgoblin. They did this miniseries called Loners. That's where where Lightspeed was last seen, and they dropped this. And uh, I'm I'm glad that he's going back to it because it didn't really come to anything in Loners. Yeah. So the basically you know, we didn't actually say what it was, but um, oh, yeah. Hazmat sort of makes the uh, logical leap that Lightspeed might be a lesbian. Doesn't have a boyfriend, mentions girl power, has a rainbow. Now, mind you, she's had the rainbow since she was, like, yeah. five. So, you know, it's not like that's a new thing. Um, so, uh, you know, I don't know where that'll end up. But, um, but yeah. Um, I love this. Uh, you know, there's just a couple of nice little jokes. Like when, the, uh, when Cyclops and his X-Men first show up, and they're like, is that a sentinel? Destroy, Destroy all <laughs> mutants. <laughs> Welcome, honored guest. <laughs> That's brilliant. I love that. I, 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 I want this to have an issue. Like, not right now, but down the line. Let me just get back to Justin Seyford here and just see what he's been up to since his series ended like five years ago. Yeah. More Sentinel. I want that. I'm so happy he's in this. And the comedy is already, the lightheartedness is already there. Yes. Destroy all mutants. <laughs> Did, um,. Did Hawkeye realize he has a movie coming out? 
I think it may, he may have become aware of that fact with this abrupt change in costume. He's also wearing it over in Avengers this week, and I feel like it might have even been glimpsed earlier than this, but it's amazing how it's just sort of popped up without any commentary or fanfare at all. Mm-mm. You know when somebody changing costumes used to be a big thing? I miss that. Yeah. I miss whenever somebody would change their costume and it warranted a splash page introduction. Do you remember when Iron Man <laughs> changed his armor once every 30 years and it was like, holy shit, Iron Man's armor is different. And now that nobody cares. He anymore. changes it like I every week. That. <laughs> I know. Costume is, I don't mind the costume, actually. I quite like the costume, but I really, really like Hawkeye in this. You know, like, Bendis has a soft spot for Hawkeye and he writes him pretty well, but this is, this is my Hawkeye. Yeah. This oh, this is, is the Hawk. This is the <laughs> Hawk Ionist I have seen Hawkeye since Six Avengers. You know, he doesn't believe that uh, the the X Men are. You know, what is it? What is this? Uh, I'm with Pietro on this. Look at these guys. Magneto and the White Queen looks like the Brotherhood <laughs> of Evil Mutants to me. I'm gonna, uh, remember when Magneto brain zapped the X Men into fighting us? There's mind control going on here. That really reminds. There was this whole thing where, um, in at Busick's X Men again, where Hawkeye just wouldn't believe that the uh, Squadron Supreme were acting on their own and that they were mind control. And it totally turned out they were. <laughs> um, <laughs> the... And a, a giant man tells him that we can't begrudge people a second chance. Second chance? My hero's had like thirty. How many times are we gonna get burned before we stop cooking naked? I, <laughs> I laughed and like had to read that line to my wife. <laughs> Because I thought it was so good. <laughs> I was like, well, that is listen, awesome. Listen, Hawkeye, why don't you stay here and supervise the students? Things are tense enough with Pietro in there. Yeah, oh, okay. All right, kids, huddle up. We're going to work on resisting mind control today. No particular reason. <laughs> um, you know, my only problem, to kind of go back to the costume for a minute, that my only problem is, is that between this costume and 52 and Young Justice... You know, used to, I could tell the difference between Hawkeye (laughs) and Green Arrow. And now, I can't tell the difference between Green Arrow, Red Arrow, and Hawkeye. Other than the color. It's like I'm playing Mortal Kombat. It sounds sounds like Ninja Turtles, you know? They just have the different colors. I mean, it really is. like (laughs) The sunglasses-clad, you know, archer is just... I I don't know. It's... uh, And I understand it's because of the movie. Okay, I get it. It's more purple in the film, still. Yeah. Um, let's see. Emma Frost compliments uh, Tigress costume-ish. <laughs> or what there is of it. Did anyone ever tell you it's inappropriate for a teacher? <laughs> yeah. Of which um, Emma has a lot of clothes on in this issue. Yeah, that's Emma's standard outfit these days. I'm um, just making it. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> But I absolutely love this bit with Magneto and, and Quicksilver, though. Uh, the, the the reason Finesse is able to uh, blackmail Quicksilver into doing what she's had him do is because she's figured out that the whole cover story that he's spun... Um, well, well, Magneto has figured it out as well. He, they just have this exchange. You know, what is it What is it they said here now? Um... I just you know, uh, Magneto says that in return in return for his aid, he wants Quicksilver to just step away from mutant affairs because he's done enough damage, and Quicksilver can't believe this because it's freaking Magneto, you yeah. know. And he's like, "What is it?" And he's like, Clearly, they don't teach history here. You coerced your sister <laughs> into warping reality, creating an entirely new world. And when it collapsed in her despair, she nearly exterminated mutant kind altogether. I was trying to save her. You gave up on her. You would have let Wolverine kill her. I do not dispute your good intentions, just your judgment and mental stability. <laughs> <laughs> and then he carries it, like this, this is the, the uh, you tried to fix your mistakes, restore mutants' powers with the t- humans' Terrigen mists, and failed, causing war between them and Earth. That, that wasn't me, that was a Skrull. Oh, yes, a shape-changing alien masquerading as you was responsible for all your misdeeds. Really, Pietro, a child could see through that lie. Oh, and did. Or is there some other reason your daughter won't speak to you? <laughs> Burn! Oh. Because all of that totally happened. Quicksilver's daughter did figure out what he was doing. This is years ago. This is the Son of Am miniseries and the Silent War miniseries. Nobody mm. read them and nobody cared, but Christos Gage remembers. <laughs> Do you remember whenever people cared about continuity? Uh. Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> what was it again talking about just christos gage what was it on twitter he had an exchange with uh was it kurt busick about he's like oh my brain is too filled with like the first name of the dinosaur man or something it was hilarious <laughs> then they had some exchange back and forth trying to remember the actual names of villains <laughs> I'm like uh, uh, which I, none of them i, I knew <laughs> like i got stuck on the same one as gage did so. <laughs> <laughs> that was hilarious follow them on twitter people you'll get our jokes um so and of course now i mean the thing about this whole sequence though is that reptile and, and finesse are actually watching and listening in because they're in like the observation deck and he's got his super ears on and she can read lips so she kind of flips out <laughs> yeah that Finesse. really shocked me you know it's yeah like she was the girl really pissed supposed to no emotions and no relation to people i mean she's really lost it you know you think she got some attachment maybe to quicksilver with all I, of that, yeah like, i know i don't know if there's a little hot for teacher going on there or not well, I mean, I don't even know if it's that. Maybe it's more of like a, you know, like a father she never had or... Yeah, well, you know, you know, there's that possibility more, too. But... More in that direction, I'm thinking, you know, like... You know, I mean, because there's even mention later. I mean, again, there's a lot of fathers and children sort of, you know, context to this. And I wonder about that because he even mentions, you know, Quicksilver mentions later that, um, you know, her parents were both, you know, bad guys or whatever. And that they weren't really much of a good influence. Uh, and that he couldn't even really have a, you know, a good, uh, she couldn't have a really good relationship with him. Um, but then pretty much from that point, that's where the shit hits the fan. And there's, you know, Finesse kicks Magneto in the head and there's all kinds of fighting. Um, of which uh, Quicksilver ends up actually like giving in to Magneto's demands. <laughs> but not on his terms because he says he'll consult like Storm or someone else. Not him, so. But, I mean, that's the brunt of this. Like I said, a lot of this is really interesting. In particular, this little seed of doubt that Magneto sort of sows at the at the end, um, or near the end, when he's leaving, he's talking to Finesse. And I, I'm not sure about the events on this, where there's something where... Oh, that was uh, was one of the things that Quicksilver, you know, Quick uh, Finesse says something about, oh, my parents were awful, or you know, not her literal parents, her adoptive parents, and Quicksilver just retorts, oh yeah, you think you had it bad? My my dad hired assassins to attack me and my sister in its sleep, and it was just seemed like hyperbole. So Finesse actually actually asks Magneto here at the end, did you really? And he says they were under orders not to injure them, but don't tell him that. And it's kind of like. Is that true or not? You know, because then you... Oh, no, that's that's no, that's just a little jokey thing at the end. Because it's like Magneto genuinely did love his kids. Yeah, in his own, like, twisted way. I mean... Of course, that's, of course he didn't know they were his kids when he was doing this to him. Yeah. I mean, I <laughs> seem to recall reading at some point that he manipulated their blood to control their minds at one point. So... I think somebody may have, uh, uh, yeah, I can't keep it all straight. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Prob probably not. But that seems like somebody coming up with an easy excuse. Could be. That was probably during the 90s. And, well, <laughs> there you go. So, anyway, great issue. Um, you know, again, like you said, uh, some of the great stuff is that Christos Gage is pretty good about planting a seed and then just letting it grow, you know, letting it do its thing and not really, you know, messing with it too much. And so, you know, we have this inkling that reptiles being controlled by his future self, but you know, you can see it if you're looking for it. Exactly. But and well, part of it, and that's the part I didn't mention is there, there was some discussion about having Emma like actually, which is a huge ethics thing in my mind. There was a whole yeah. deal about having Emma go through and like, mentally screen everybody to see what they knew or whatever and uh i can't remember who was objecting to it at first but even but hank was kind of like no that was kind of what i was thinking you know maybe just a surface scan and when she couldn't do that i had to go to individual then he decided to look at the evidence first and when they found out it was something maybe from the future or another dimension or something they backed off on that but i'm thinking ooh, if they do that then they probably figure out something with reptile but um but that kind of, so it's one of those things where it's like, I don't know, a little plant for the reader, but not, you know, mm -hmm. it's good stuff. I mean, like I said, again, I mean, 
you know, I yeah, don't this think... This is going to bubble under for a while. You oh, know? I mean, yeah. Re Reptile just prods this, this, the conflict of this issue into happening, mm -hmm. you know? Oh, yeah, easily. But uh, it's, you know, it's, it's for another time. Yeah. As yeah. a story, X-23 joins next issue, you know, so it'll probably be more about that again. That'll be something. So I don't know. I mean, I like I said, I don't know much about X-23, but, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, it should be interesting um, to see her come in. It's, uh, she's genetically Wolverine, right? Yeah, Just... she's, a, she's a teenage clone, teenage girl, Wolverine with boobs. Wolverine with boobs. They couldn't, but not, but not really. They couldn't yeah, salvage that Y chromosome. So, <laughs> no, it was she was one of she was the twenty third attempt they made at cloning Wolverine. She actually was created for the X Men Evolution cartoon, ah. and uh, then made the jump to the mainstream universe a little while later. Not much later either. Cool. Yeah, the, but that was what I read. They couldn't salvage the. Uh, they had Wolverine's DNA, but they couldn't salvage the Y chromosome, so they had to make I the clone know, female. Like that. That's my understanding. So, anyway. Cool! You'll learn so, more next issue, I'm sure. Probably. So, anyway, that's me, Academy. Put that on your pre-order list, please. Yeah. Please. Fight the power. Yes. Make sure this one lives. Yes. Must live on. So, Chris. Uh, thus far, none of the books that uh, I've been reading personally have fallen under the hammer. Yeah. Or, or under the knife. Or I mean, I, you I wanted to trim some books back, but not that way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you know? Well, I don't have anything I particularly want to devote a lot of time to today, so I'm just going to touch on a couple of things. The first of which is Avengers 19, because this is the new team um, issue, the new, the new team, teamy put together -y issue. And um, there's just one, one uh, sentence that I did, uh, which is, Fuck yeah, the vision! Oh! Because the vision's back, mother. Fuckers, I'm what? Swear, all I up and down, it's the Vision this month in Avengers. Oh yeah, oh yeah. The Vision has been out of it since Avengers disassembled. He got exploded, torn to bits by uh, mind-controlled She-Hulk, and there's been a Vision with the Young Avengers, who was uh, he had the engram, he had the the programming of the Vision, but instead of the engrams of Wonder Man, he had the engrams of Iron Lad. Uh, and he was made out of Iron Lad's armor. So, you know, it was a vision. And I think with Iron Lad's return in the children's crusade, I mean, people were really thinking that if we, um, it was in Fear Itself 7.1, actually, that the vision was seen in a crowd, like he had one line of dialogue, uh, and everybody was like, the vision? What's that? Uh, and we weren't sure if it was supposed to be the vision vision or just kid vision from the Young Avengers. Um uh, and everybody sort of assumed we would probably just have to look at the Children's Crusade, which is still pottering along and not quite over yet um, for the answers there. Momentum has really died on that thing, even though it looks like it's going to be massively significant by the time that it's over. Um, but no, you know, here, I, th I think we might see the end of Kid Vision over in Young Avengers uh, with Iron Lad's return. He seems a bit redundant, and uh, we get the real Vision back over in Avengers now. And it's like, yeah, it's the Vision. And it's suddenly, with the sudden appearance of the Vision... That this book has become the fucking Avengers. <laughs> <laughs> Not just the Avengers. No, that's the, the adjective for Avengers. adjectiveless <laughs> Avengers. The MF and Avengers. Uh... Because, uh, well, the new team shakeup is essentially that. Um, let's see, what, how does that go? Um, Spidey and Wolvie are off. They are off the, the adjectiveless Avengers team. Uh, Vision and Quake and Storm are on the team. Quake? Uh, yeah, Quake's Dizzy Jones. One of Bendis' pet characters. The one fucking burr under the saddle. Everything looked like it was heading in an interesting direction. Storm on the Avengers. Really unconventional, but interesting enough that I think you'd get away with it. So the, the team is Storm, Iron Man, Captain America, Vision, Spider-Woman, Red Hulk, Protector, Hawkeye, and Quake. And it's just like at the last second, Captain America goes, you over here, you're on. And it's like, what is it that you see in this character of Quake, Bendis, that you insist on on using her constantly. She's, she's got seismic uh, powers, and she was um, uh, one of the figures in um, Secret Warriors, Ben Hickman's Secret Warriors. Um, but it's like, you know, whatever. Uh, she'll just do the same thing everybody else does in a Bendis Adventures team book anyway, which is stand around in the background and say nothing. <laughs> but the oh, vision. 
Uh, but it's the, he returns great and everything. So like Tony 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 Stark's been working on repairing him over time, and like a week ago he hit the right button or lever or something, and he started to regenerate. And then he's back, and I said, like, "I am sorry if my sudden appearance here is startling, and I apologize if I do not seem as moved as all of you. To me, it feels like I had only seen you yesterday. Obviously, I am happy to see you all, and happy to see Avengers Mansion standing." And Spidey just goes, I don't remember him talking this much. I have been briefed on all current <laughs> events and recent Avengers history. It seems you have been rather busy. I am caught up to speed, and I would like to... To... And the Vision just looks over, and Tony goes, Oh, yeah, there's a Red Hulk now. <laughs> <laughs> um... and, and the Red Hulk's just... He's just like eating a bowl of eggs. And he's like, well, Oh, uh, hey, robot. Vision, is that really you? Oh, uh, it's the vision. Yay. So Spidey and then Wolverine are off the uh, adjective list Avengers team and just over on the, the new team now. So that's good. Like, like they said, so they really got their... So now so they've really taken them off? They're they're Yeah, done yeah. There? They've uh, the the oh. uh, the adjective list team, as Wolverine says, has its mutant on spider per- person. <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 well here's the idea. You going out there? Hell no. Are we still on that team? They got their mutant and spider person. I feel used. Mm. <laughs> God. But then there's this great <laughs> swerve at the end as well, like, where you know uh, Iron Man uh, introduces the team and get the traditional oh, camera flashes, Avengers, and all the questions start pouring in, and then boom, out of the crowd, I have a question. My name is Norman Osborn, and I was ousted from my post as head of the Avengers and detained in a federal prison against my will without trial. And I'm here to rectify that situation. To be continued. Boom. What? Ha! Whoa. Blindside. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I'm interested to see what comes next. Uh, I don't know. I read I read new. Did you guys talk about New Avengers last week? Uh, no, because there was nothing nope. to talk about. Yeah, other than putting the new Dark Avengers together. Yeah, yeah that was something that happened. That was a very uneventful issue. It did. But yeah, yeah so Avengers was fun. It just caught me off guard. I was like, who's it going to be? Who turned the pitch? Oh, it's the Vision! Yes! I wanted to jump out <laughs> of the seat. I was just happy that Vision was back. And uh, <laughs> speaking of revisiting the past, uh, Wonder Woman number three is also out this week. Um, and yeah, I actually the... read this one. Yeah, now this issue, I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm gonna blow this completely because DC didn't feel that they had to keep it hidden about two months ago, yeah. whenever they re- the twist in this in the in the in the press or in an interview, uh, in which it turns out that um, Wonder Woman was not made from clay and she is actually the biological child of uh, Hippolyta and Zeus, and uh, that's about it. <laughs> well, you were. Know you the other, the other Wonder Amazons. Diana are, uh, has has her issues of PMS in here, and she goes on a little spree, telling everyone to you know go, you know, find themselves a new way of life, like she is, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> so. I don't know. It's just like I, it's just like, I you know I saw this issue getting good reviews and everything, but it just couldn't do it for me because I already knew what it was about. So, like, I'm reading this issue on 20 pages, and it's like, this is 20 pages of nothing that was not already blown. Oh, come on, there's or... a really good sex scene in there. That's a pretty tasteful sex scene, actually. <laughs> but it's nothing that I didn't already know or couldn't solidly infer from simply knowing that that's what happened. You know, I didn't need, well, I mean, obviously, the story does require it, but it certainly didn't surprise me to have two pages of Hera and, and uh, Hera, Hippolyta and Zeus's, like, courtship taking the form of them knocking the shit out of each other all across the world. It's obvious, you know, it's like, oh, really, an Amazon and a god got it on? I wonder if they fought first, you know. <laughs> yeah. Are they Klingons? Yeah. So- no. <laughs> <laughs> a bladed weapons there. You know, oh, Wonder Woman doesn't take it well and accuses her mother of having lied to her her whole life. Jesus, no way. Seriously? Really? Wow. I don't I see why so she's... Too. I don't know what she's all pissed about. Hmm. <laughs> What's well, not that but I'm saying I don't is... get it. I'm saying that there was not an ounce of surprise or tension or excitement or anything in this issue for me. You know, when they revealed the, 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 what the change was, what the twist was, they sucked anything out of the issue as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, like, I think... I, well, it's one of those deals where it's like you... Good, 
Sorry? Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. The art was awesome. Oh, yeah. God. Yeah, I mean, I think once they reveal the, the twist there, it's like, I probably could have wrote the issue. I mean, you know, yeah, it kind of writes it's itself. All, it's exactly the beats that you would... I mean, and it's not bad because of it. No. But blowing it just sunders the substance of the issue, you know? I mean, uh, wonder uh, the other Amazons are all a bit... They, they're, they're, like, angry because they're, they're building the pyres to burn the bodies of the Amazons that scorn forced to kill each other through their magical deception, and they blame Wonder Woman for bringing bringing war to their shores, and like it ends with Wonder Woman lighting the pirates herself and telling them all the STFU because she's going to leave and they don't have to worry about her anymore. And she's not Diana; she's rejecting her identity, and she is just Wonder Woman now. I don't know, guys. I mm. don't think I don't think Wonder Woman's doing it for me. I'm seeing all these good reviews, and I I appreciate what's happening in it, and I really want to enjoy it, but. I think this is strike three for Wonder Woman with me. I just don't think it's doing it for me. I wish I could say why. I can't pin it down. I don't think I don't care about Wonder Woman. You know, and, and I think, you know, this series has done nothing to do that. You know, it hasn't been like all the other series that have, that have been reinventing their characters or reintroducing them. It's just plop, Wonder Woman. There you go. There's been no attempt to reestablish your character or to show us what Wonder Woman brings to comics or what Wonder Woman offers that nobody else does, you know. I was willing to give it a couple of issues off the back. I mean, this was my primary complaint about the first one, you guys will remember. So they're, 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 you know, there's no attempt made by these comics to tell us who Wonder Woman is, to introduce her in any way. It just has this other... St- I, I, I mean, I mean, its approach to introducing Wonder Woman is to been to completely undo anything everybody knew about Wonder Woman. And not in the right way, not in the ultimate here is a new origin style way, but in the everything you knew is wrong, forget it sort of way. It's just not doing it for me. And I, I would really like to like it, but... It's I'm funny, you know, because Green I, Arrow. I, There's a lot. Well, I, I'm not reading Green Arrow, so I can't. <laughs> it's, like, it's like it's like I don't. I just think I just think I'm coming to the solid conclusion that no writer is ever really going to make me care that much about Wonder Woman, despite the obvious talent that may be on display. I've given it several chances under several authors whose work I've enjoyed, and it's just never clicked for me. And I say to myself, maybe if I liked Wonder Woman already, I would be loving on this. But then I stop and think, if they completely redefine the character and history of somebody that I liked for a story that is, to me at least, not particularly better or or even a very good idea, I don't think I would take, I would probably enjoy it even less in that instance. So I don't Mm. know. Yeah. I'm actually preferring this. I don't mind it. Well, I mean, to be fair, I mean, the idea of her as the offspring of God and, and mortal, like that's pure Greek myth. You know? Oh yeah, and certainly consolidating. Well, we talked well, back when we talked about Wonder Woman number one again. I was saying Wonder Woman's got a very muddled origin that just doesn't translate. The whole perfect being sculpted from clay. There's no relatability there. Yeah. And, and well, of course, there's always the question of whether you want Wonder Woman to be relatable or not. But I think you do as your primary female role model superhero. And um, I think this is an attempt at that, and, and certainly, you know, if there was to be a Wonder Woman film or something, and this was her origin in it, like, as a method of simply consolidation and simplification to make it work on the screen, you know, it, it reads kind of like that, but it doesn't, at the same time, it doesn't read like an origin story like that, because it's all told in flashback as a retcon, it's not a fresh start, it's not a fresh introduction for Wonder Woman. As a New 52, just like amongst some other books, it's really very muddled, and I just, I want to like it, but I just can't, and I, I don't think Wonder Woman and I have a future. Hmm. <laughs> That's Wonder Woman and I are fu- done professionally. Done professionally. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> You're going to move on to seek other opportunities and hmm. that's too bad yeah i uh yeah that's the yeah that's a, no, that's about it from me yeah okay so vision is awesome wonder woman well apparently s- i prefer my beings to be sculpted from artificial material there you go <laughs> so Never mind. Um, <laughs> just ways I could go there. I'm just going to stay here. Anyway, <laughs> so speaking of Wonder Woman then. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I enjoyed this. That brings us to Justice League number three. Ba-ba-bum. Yeah. 
Still four dollars. Yeah, what's we'll up with that? Not sure why. Um, yeah, well, I mean, uh, as of I believe, next issue or very soon, there are going to be uh, Captain Marvel, Shazam backups in this. That would be fine. So it'll be, it'll be, and you know, it does have the bonus material that is actual bonus material and hey. not that like, crap from Action Comics. But yeah. they really, they, I mean, last issue was good where you had the uh, interview excerpts with Steve Trevor and Amanda Waller, but this is pure cheek. Yeah. What they try to pass off as bonus content. The first couple of pages of a novel about Atlantis, which is to say, it's cover, a library card, a list of books that don't exist, a dedication to people who don't exist, and the sole bit of content is the actual foreword. Yeah. Thanks. Sure glad Thanks I... for that. Yeah, that filled up them pages real sure nice. Sure glad I got that for my extra dollar. Um, what is this comic? Um... Uh, I don't know. Wonder Woman. There you go. That's pretty much it. <laughs> Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman. Hey, it's Aquaman. Um, uh, Wonder Woman's <laughs> taking her own stance on Wall Street. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman tries ice cream. They fight a lot of the dark side monsters. Um, see, I like that. I like the Stranger in a Strange Land thing. It's nothing to hang a, a series. Yeah. You, you know, no. Wonder Woman can never always be that. When Jodie Pickle tried to go back and make Wonder Woman that, whenever she started her brief run after Alan Heinberg before Amazon's attacks, it was dire. It just didn't work at all. But as an origin story for Wonder Woman and as something to hang a film on, yeah, no. Thor style, Stranger in a Strange Land well, is absolutely the way to go about it. I think the best thing about this issue is Aquaman shows that he has a set. Yeah, that the he shows up at the very very end, but yeah. um, but we'll get to that. So, um, <laughs> yeah. um, well, our mini Justice League is still fighting the Dark Side monsters, um, and <laughs> Wonder Woman catches a glimpse of it on TV and joins the fray. Um, I don't on know. TV. I mean, there's not a lot that happens in the issue other than fighting the Dark Side monsters. There's a yeah, few a few things and revelations that I thought was interesting out of it. I mean, of course. You know, just to mention first, I mean, yeah, yeah, it's it's art. Art is good. Art is beautiful in this. <laughs> I mean, there's some really great stuff in here. Um, I will say from that very first page, I looked at that and I was like, I'm kind of glad Wonder Woman doesn't have pants. It just, it's like that first page is like, you know, it feels like Wonder Woman. I can't disagree with you. I was really warm to the pants. I mean, I'm I'm calmed back down at the trousers, as I would call them. But I, you know, I'm <laughs> I'm I'm resigned to the lack of them now. And you know, she certainly, you know, certainly the, the all the gaping faces of the onlookers are sold much more um, with the lack of trouser. And it, I, I, it almost highlights the fact that she is a stranger in a strange land and doesn't realize, yeah, you probably should put some fucking slacks on there, love, yeah. um, <laughs> before going out and striding around. Uh, you know, so it helps to sell that. Um, I still wish she wore trousers today, though. I really got used to the trousers. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It just It's one of those no, things where it's like the one. costume has changed, but it still feels like... The sort of iconic I like Wonder this Woman. new design. I really yeah. do. Yeah, like they they design. they haven't screwed with it. It's one of the more successful readers. I'm still not totally sure about the blue boots, but uh, you know, by and large, there's been very little. Let's just say it's very fashion good. conscious in the sense that it all matchy matches. Yep. But See, it's not too matchy matchy. You and know? when she's she's still got the, like the eagle. Yeah, you know, and it's all silver, picture. you know. It's yep. it's at least exactly. a consistent See, color. You've got that. You've See, got it. Yeah. I've watched a lot of Project <laughs> Runway with my wife. So, <laughs> you know. But now her lasso doesn't go with anything. Well, but that's because well, it's is, magical. It kind of draws attention to it. Don't you have to match to your handbag with your shoes? Um, no, it's not a handbag. It's a it's a it's, oh, a, it's the it's, it's an enchanted hurt. weapon. That's a whole yeah, different thing. It, it, it's the equivalent. It's her equivalent of the handbag. Your enchanted <laughs> weapon. He goes nowhere without it. It's it's in the book of fashion, right? Your enchanted weapon is allowed to not have to match the rest of your outfit. It's okay. Oh, um, okay then. Just just ask him, Tim Gunn. He'll fill you in. It's okay. Um, so there are three American listeners got that joke. Anyway, um. <laughs> But uh, let's see. Yeah, I like this little exchange, though, with the ice cream. I think it's, again, it's kind of fun, you know. These are the ways to sell Wonder Woman. You saw it in um, in the Wonder Woman animated movie as well, helping a little girl with yeah. something. Yeah. Well, 
because it's all a, little girls look up to Wonder Woman. Pot. No. Yeah, that's it. You know, yeah. it's a little bit pot, but it works. It's pot oh, because yeah. it works. It's a trope because it works. Yeah. You know, this does a better, a better selling uh, uh, as an introduction to Wonder Woman to me than anything the Wonder Woman book has done. Um, yeah, exactly. And you know, and a lot of her shots and stuff, I think, are really tasteful. We've talked about some of the really. Um, not so tasteful ways that the female form has been portrayed in this new 52. And, and I, I think that most of like her, her shots are very tasteful. They're not, you know, exploitive at least in that sense. Um, <laughs> and Hey, who doesn't love fighting monsters? Cause Wonder Woman does. Yeah. Uh, yes. She was like I looking for trouble. Yeah. I love it. Right in there. Um, I really got interested in this bit with, I always like, you know, background things and stuff. Um, and uh, I got really interested in this bit with, um, with Cyborg because, um, well, first thing, uh, the, the monsters are carrying people away. And Batman real notices later in this issue that they're not like killing people. They're actually taking them somewhere. They're, they're taking them yeah. away. And so we're, we're kind of back at the lab at star labs at this point point. And one of the people they take away is Professor Ivo. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, so that's kind of interesting. And then um, they, um, uh, Victor's father is going to you know, put his son back together. And the scientist that's going to help him is Tio Maro. Robots, robots everywhere. Oh, <laughs> my God. I'm like, holy crap, it's Tio Maro. <laughs> so uh that's interesting I, I really like this transformation stage that they used as cyborg mm. it's a lot more believable as well than yeah. his dad just did it there's a bit of there's a bit of hoodoo involved you know mm -hmm. he just sort of got, sticks the stuff on him and it's weird alien tech that he doesn't really understand and he just shoots him up full of nanites it seems like he might he's got a bit of fourth world in him i love this um this page of him of him activating you know when you get the ping of the mother box mm. as he is like attuned somehow through the fourth through it through it to to and there's like dark side sense we don't get it we, we just see a silhouetted figure on a mountaintop as it turns its head as if it hears the pinging or as if it senses cyborg yeah yeah, yeah that, that full one page you know, again, just the pings, no lines. Mm. Yeah. And it's like um, hey, if you ever weren't entirely sure if Jim Lee can actually pull off something like artsy. Beyond just like really big slap bang superhero stuff, you know, the way that Cyborg's face is blended into the landscape yeah. of Apocalypse, this is pretty cool looking. Well, this, yeah, awesome. and especially the bottom of the page mm. where you sort of have that blending of Cyborg and, and uh, Dark Side. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's good. I'm all about this. He starts yelling in binary too. That's kind of awesome. Yeah, that's a comic book code for Robot Went Crazy. Yep. R two D two yelling, um, but that's about. I mean, story wise, that's about it. But and that's yeah. like I say, well, I this think this is your your fighty middle chapter. Yeah, and there's plenty of that. Mm. It's, um, it's it's time in this for the story. I mean, like I, I don't remember if I was saying it on the show or not, but I was legitimately unsure as to whether or not this first story arc would actually involve Darkseid, whether it would pay off the stuff yeah. with the Parademon and the Mother Box from the first issue. And um, it did, and it's it's you know this it's, it's it's evening out after a wobbly first issue, like an uneventful first issue that was a poor trailer for the entire New Fifty Two. It is, it's evening out to be a really entertaining comic, and you know it's Jeff Jones and Jim Lee. It, it was always gonna. Yeah, absolutely. I, I liked how Hal, Hal Jordan called dibs on Wonder Woman, though. We uh, missed that. No, one. that was <laughs> yeah, <the laughs> Green Lantern, as played by Neil Patrick Harris. Yeah. <laughs> I had dibs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, but I do have to say that this introduction of uh, Aquaman was pretty nice. damned cool. <laughs> yes, yeah. it was awesome. Jeff, Jeff Jones is bringing the cool back to Aquaman. Yeah. Um, I was really liking Aquaman with this reboot, and this just sold it even more. Yeah. I, I mean, especially that last part. So who's in charge here? I vote me. I vote me. <laughs> <laughs> I am a king. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, that was the thing. Is like I could only see 
Brave and the Bold Aquaman, like in that moment. Where it's like, Who's in charge here? I vote me! Yes. Outrageous! <laughs> it's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah, that's exactly what I thought. So, because I'm not reading Aquaman. So. Aquaman's good! That's, that's what I've heard. <laughs> Boy, they put that armor and stuff on uh, Victor pretty quick, too. That was... Uh, yeah. Well, this yeah. is this is basically what I well, I mean, we all figured this was going to be Cyborg's origin story. I'm I'm still sticking to my theory that um he'll probably like help win the day in some way with like his his fourth world technology connection, um like maybe be able to blast them all back to apocalypse or whatever. Anyway, and then I'm still sticking with my prediction that as a comic, Justice League will will jump forward to the present day. After yeah. this origin story, mm -hmm. it'll hop up to the present, and Cyborg will be a member of the team in the present, as he was before the New 52 started, but they'll just jump, they'll happily, they'll carefully jump over that period of time that will freely allow him to go off and have been a Titan. Yeah. Yeah, probably so. I mean, that makes Sticking sense. Sticking to my prediction, because it's going to totally, I mean, it's not, well, at, at this point, you can't say mess up history, because history is whatever they're making it as it is but i would just like it to be i don't want justice i don't think anybody really wants justice league to be in the action comics like set five years in the past you know because you know you've got your present day superman book action has the room to be the book in the past you know and and be that separate thing but we've only got the one justice league book and we don't want you know we want the justice league in the here and now as quickly as we possibly can so we oh, can yeah. properly expand the scope of the present day universe you know it's like that's one of the <coughs> excuse me it's one of the problems with justice league international which is like okay we've got the justice league international in the present day but we haven't even seen the justice league yet so we don't exactly know what they're doing that the justice league isn't doing you know their yeah. identity is it is in flux it's not it's hard to nail down what the point of the jl uh, JLI is well and seen the JLA. No, I mean the JLI is a whole different thing, though. I mean they're they're sanctioned by the United Nations. Their whole deal is to be separate. And actually, what they've ended up doing has ended up being completely separate from even what the United Nations set them up to do. So I wouldn't say like, I mean they're not even they weren't even designed to like interact in any way with the Justice League. I'm not saying interact. I'm just saying like. Um, well, I mean, that's the thing is like the JLI was designed to be a PR stunt. They weren't really yeah. meant to do anything. <laughs> but why is it that they need? I'm just saying, it's just like the Justice League has been completely absent from the yes, the present. That is now, that, yeah. everything consciously, apart from like one appearance in what was it? I've forgotten what the comic even was now, where Wonder Woman, Superman, and Batman all went somewhere together. I've forgotten what the comic was. It was hmm. Justice League Dark. Might have been Justice League Dark. Uh. Um, and, uh, you know, I think it's probably a conscious thing, but, um, you know, we got to get the Justice League in the present day, and I think that's the next step to take after this uh, This origin story is over. Wouldn't be too surprised if somebody other than Jim Lee was drawing it by then as well. Hmm. Yeah, well, that's yeah. A, yeah, that's just my my view. And and hey, I am so ready for some Shazam backups. Yeah, it's like that there's be... something missing from the from the new Fifty Two. It's Shazam. It's like it feels like there ought to be a Shazam yeah. book. It's like I mean, especially... one of the one of the like, with so much diversity and so many different properties and corners of the universe, getting books, if they're notable by their absence. You know, mm -hmm. so backup strips and Justice League, you know, a book I'm already buying. I don't have to buy another comic to get it. Hell yeah. 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 And it does seem like that's missing because especially because that character was in, you know, Flashpoint and stuff as well. I mean, so. Yeah. Justice League is one of my favorites out of the new 50. After a wobbly start, it's definitely it's consolidated and, and a very long break between the second and third. It's consolidated quickly and nicely into basically what I always expected from it. Absolutely. Yeah, I like it. I mean, it's I, you know, I think there were some initial complaints and some things were, but now that it's sort of gotten its legs underneath it and started to uh, to move along, and like I said, I like the little side things too. I'm always looking for names and things to see. I mean, yeah. especially now that we know that like Ivo and Tio Morrow exist in this world, that sets up things like uh, Ultimo and um, you know Red Amazing. Tornado and uh, Amazo. Amazing. I'm sorry, Amazo. Thank you. Ultimo. Uh, it's an Iron Man rule. That's a, oh, yeah, that's a different thing. Anyway, <laughs> so it sets those things up to, you know, 
exist in this world as well and and uh you know sort of repopulate the world with things that we know apparently we've lost nicole by the way yeah she she had to run ah she had to run i didn't even see yeah yeah no she hasn't dropped she had to run she had to run i like to keep a picture up because things screwed up so (laughs) um so we'll just leave that up maybe for a second um Anyway, so I guess that's it. I guess we'll get out of yeah, here. Yeah, let's go in. Yep. That's about it. Um, Justice League, good. Check that out. Um, I got caught up on Young Justice, actually. Yeah, that um, is a show that has hit its stride. Man. Um, do you, did, After I, that rather wonky, like, Injustice League episode, and now every episode is not going, oh, the light. Do you see the light? Have you seen the light? The light, the yeah. light, the light. It is, it is out there doing its its own thing now it's not so burdened by the need to have every plot tie into this it has really hit its stride and i'm really happy given how uneven thundercats has proven in the ability to balance a story arc and character development to see young justice knocking it out of the park at this stage yeah and um i mean well i got the sense that um the um that halloween episode should have happened before that like sort of two-part where that went, I can't remember what the first one was called that went into disorder where they had the, uh, the mind, um, the, uh, well, no, but you can see the dates like they happen where they happen. Or is it, I didn't check the dates, I guess on it. Yeah. So. Oh no, no. This is very specific. Oh, well, I'll have to go back, I guess maybe, but anyway, um, the, uh, the, the disorder episode in particular was the one that really got me because like I said, this whole deal with, with Miss Martian, you know, we as the viewers have known for quite a while that she's a white Martian. If you read the comics, you'll know. Yeah. And so <laughs> it's like, it's one of those things where it's like we've known, but throughout the story, they keep going. It's like, well, they, they think she's a green Martian. Why is that? Hmm. And then we find out you know, in this past week that she just sort of hitched a ride with Martian Manhunter from the moon or from Mars and. Mm-hmm. And then that the perfect moment was when she was in the sort of therapy with uh, Black Canary. And Black Canary says, oh, you've turned white. And she about shit <laughs> herself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was brilliant. I was like, oh, man. <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah, Young Justice. That's really... It's really, you know, DC is getting the animation. By, it's it's an anime, you know. You know, I mean, DC is... is uh, I, we said it a while back on the show is how just Marvel has just sort of been kicking DC's ass all across the other media lately, films and, and television. And the only area DC's really been succeeding in is in their direct-to-DVD movies. Mm-hmm. Not that I'm knocking Brave and the Bold, but Brave and the Bold was all they had for, over the last, whatever, two or three years, whereas Marvel served up, you know, uh, Spectacular Spider-Man, Wolverine and the X-Men, Armored Adventures, The Avengers, Superhero Squad for the kids. You know, DC's just had Brave and the Bold. And now they got Young Justice, which has got its legs under it now and is really run and green lantern looks set to be very good too i think i'm in positive emotions for that we've got the new batman series coming up next year and we've got this uh, dc nation block which there have been trailers running for too which looks like it is gonna have some mad fun shit in it so <clears throat> yeah they've really sort of i mean they've upped their game in that department yeah and really delivered. it's sad that green lantern tanked so hard but uh the film, I mean, but uh, right. <laughs> you know, if they—that's the one area they need to get now, and it will be DC domination. Yep, it could happen. We'll see. Mm, it, the, the 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 iron is hot. Strike, yep. get it right. Yep. I mean, it's not like they're go, they're not going to get Dark Knight Rises wrong or anything, but it's like other than Batman, get it right. Yeah, Did that yeah, that's been the only thing that's been. So we'll see. Man of Steel is going to be coming out. That seems to have some sort of fifty-two-ish ties. So we'll see how that goes so all right well uh we're gonna get out of here then and uh we thank you for listening don't forget uh we do have a google plus page set up not just for uh rfc but also for uh t formers as well because we're sort of in with t formers and um comic news eye as well so check out them on uh google plus uh you want to i guess plus one them is what you do add them something like that oh. um so check that out um also all of this month uh from the tf radio network we're putting out 
uh, a show a day because it's National Comic uh, National Comic National Podcasting Month. Uh, last night, Nicole, uh, myself, XV, and uh, Paladin recorded a uh, commentary for Dark of the Moon. So if you want, you can check that out. Um, we're going to have another show featuring all of that group plus Brian Kilby's. So check that out. Uh, we're actually also uh, going to be recording and putting out a Black Friday podcast. So uh, I don't think that's a Are big you going to have anybody live on the floor? Uh, no, and we're not doing it that no, way. Actually... What's the point, man? No. Uh, we're, we're gonna, gonna get somebody out there in the middle of the crush reporting live. From... Ah, God, no, why? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> that would be hilarious. Um, but no, we're actually, I think we're recording it tonight, actually. But, um, we're it's basically going to be a lot of us that have worked a lot of retail war stories, tips, tricks, those sorts of things, some of the deals that uh, you'll see out of Transformers. So, yeah, surviving. This will be something to listen to while you're in line, um, mm -hmm. you know, waiting to get into your favorite store. So uh, we're going to put that out there as well. So check that out. I don't know. Is that a, Do they have, like, a Black Friday type deal? And yeah. I don't think so. Not, I mean, anything equivalent. We don't have Thanksgiving. So well, we don't I know. Have, I know you don't have Thanksgiving, but I didn't know if you had, like, nah, a... No, there, there isn't. No, nah, there's, there's no holidays between now and Christmas. So, so no, no Blitz Day, then. For uh, no, no. for retailers, so we're crazy here in America. We do that sort of thing. Um, uh, why I don't know, but that's what we do. So anyway, check that out as well. Get all of that stuff. Comic news eye for your comic book news. TF Radio Network. Uh, join us live every Sunday. TFRadio.net slash live. There you go. I mean, there's more than I can tell you. Um, and yeah. So anyway, thanks so much for joining us, and please. Tune in next time when it'll be Fanboy versus... This has been Fanboy versus... Visit us at tfradio.net for show notes and to subscribe to the podcast. Follow us on Twitter at TF Radio for news and updates. Like the podcast? Leave us feedback on iTunes. Copyright 2011, Radio Free Cybertron.